everybody and welcome back to the cult of the dead dove podcast it is episode nine i'm all alone today but i've got a interesting story for you guys today we're talking about vicky don jackson who was a serial killer nurse who snapped with no warning So we are just going to jump right into it today, so I hope you guys are ready to go. So Vicki Don Jackson was born February 13th, 1966 in Indiana. She's been married and divorced three times. She has two children whom she lost custody of in 2000. And she lived and worked uh, in Nanako, Nancona, Nanako, in Nancona, Texas. And she worked the night shift at the Nancona General Hospital as a nurse. She just, when I was reading up on her, she sounded like the cutest, like, lady. She was just soft-spoken, she was sweet, she was organized, she was predictable. She would order a taco basket from Dairy Queen before work, have her hair up in a tight bun, wear the same perfume every day. She just overall was the last person, of course, that you would expect to become a murderer. But that's how it always is, right? So the general hospital where she worked was very, very small. It was a small town, and it's the smallest hospital in the state. It had a total of 18 rooms and would maybe have 15 patients at any given time. Um, Vicky would always introduce herself to every patient and be like, oh, if you need anything, you just let me know. And everyone's like, oh, she's so sweet. I actually have a quote here. Um, she received compliments as a caring person, said Barbara Perry, the hospital's director of nursing. She did everything that was asked of her, and she never seemed upset about what she had to do. Uh, but then... On December 11th, 2000, she filled a syringe with curium chloride, a drug that paralyzes the respiratory system, and uh, began killing people. For fun. <laughs> Her first known victim was Donna Ellis Jennings, who was 100 years old. Um, she killed... They know that she killed 10 patients, possibly 20 in total. Um, There could have been a few more than that, even. Now, the odd thing was she wasn't mercy killing because all the people that she killed were, like, expected to get better. And that's very rare because either killings like this are either mercy killings or... Um, putting patients in medical distress on purpose so that they can, like, be a hero and save them. But she didn't do either of those, which is, uh, interesting. Another quote here, she didn't try to save anyone at all, said Kevin Benton, an investigator at the Montague County District Attorney's Office. She wanted people dead. Lots of people. That's just nice. <sighs> so one of her victims was her husband's grandfather, um, who she actually attended the funeral of and brought potato salad to the reception and was like, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. Like, let me know if you guys need anything. Um, another victim was a teenage girl that went to high school with her daughter, a woman who went to the same nightclub as her. It was just such a small town that everybody kind of knew everyone, and she didn't even care. She just was like, I guess you're going to be dead then. Um, I was reading this one article, and I'll have all of them at the end, but this is very interesting. Jackson often targeted people who had slighted her. Um, Orville Moore called her a fat ass. She went after her estranged husband's grandfather to get back at her husband. 
Um, one woman who had survived, Lydia uh, Weatherred, had recently rejected Jackson's son's advances. So it's possible that she was doing it with this reason of getting back at people, but that's the only I only read that in one article, but I still think it's a very interesting angle. Um then the same month on the twentieth she killed Sanford Ray Mitchell, and then on the 24th, on Christmas Eve, she killed boy Bruce Burnett, and then James Weasley Gore on the 29th. So she killed, like, four people in a month. For, at random. I think five or six people. So, obviously, people started wondering, hey, why are, why is everyone dying? Why is the everyone dying around specifically this nurse? So, in the beginning of 2001, families began filing lawsuits against the hospital for letting her continue her work. And then, finally, on June 11, 2001, authorities exhumed 10 bodies. Um, my guess is to look at them and be like, hmm, how did these, uh, these people die? Oh, that's interesting. Something that wasn't prescribed to them, but Nurse Vicky had? Hmm, weird. And then a whole year later, on July 16th, 2002, three days after I was born, police arrested her and charged her with four counts of capital murder. And then on March 14th, 2005, the judge declared a mistrial, but... No need to fear, because finally, on October 3rd, 2006, she pled no contest to murder and was sentenced to life in prison where she is to this day. And one of the articles that I was reading, um, the author had gone to visit her and talk to her about her crimes, and... She hasn't, like, said that she's guilty. She just pled no contest, but she's like, what? I didn't say I was guilty. And apparently she was still, like, super nice and exactly the same. So it's just very odd, in my opinion, how she snapped, but really without reason. I had a theory that maybe when she lost her kids because they were, um, she lost custody in 2000 and that's when she started killing, I was like, maybe that's a reason, but lots of people lose custody and, you know, don't start murdering their neighbors for fun, so I don't know. Um... Anyways, here are my sources, uh, SerialDispatch.com, TexasMonthly.com, Killer.Cloud, Murderpedia.org, and TexasMonthly.com. Um, I used two different articles from them. So, yeah! Um, I hope you enjoyed this story. I know it was pretty short. But the reason it's short is because next week we have a really big, uh, really messed up story of the toy box killer. And that one's really intense. So I wanted to do not like a light one, but not a super heavy one before that. And then we're going to do that one and then I'll try to do something uh, lighter the week after. But I hope you guys had and had good holidays. We are in December now, which is super weird, because where has this month gone? No idea. November, out the window. This whole year, honestly, out the window. Um, but that's all I have today. I hope everyone out there is doing all right, hanging in there. Please make sure you guys are wearing your mask over your mouth and nose because otherwise it's useless and it's not a political statement. It's just basic human decency, kind of like wearing a seatbelt. You just do it to protect yourself and others.
It's not that hard. As always, stay safe. Oh, I didn't do, I didn't plug anything. That's my bad. <laughs> if you want to follow the podcast, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Dead Dove Cult, on Instagram at The Cult of the Dead Dove Podcast, and we're also on YouTube. If you would like to listen to us there, you just have to search up The Cult of the Dead Dove, um, and it will pop right up. If you have a story that you want me to do, you can email me at the cult of the dead dove podcast at gmail.com. Stay safe, take care of yourself, and remember, kids, don't eat the dead dove. See you guys next Friday. Bye. <laughs>